Hello. Hi, Rita. It's Jessica. Hi. I wanted to know if you could give me a ride tomorrow. Yeah. I need a ride to the health center. And also, I need a ride into Sydney. Okay. I'm going to the AIDS Coalition Center. AIDS Coalition? Yeah, I'm getting blood work done. Really? Yeah. I... Yeah, I can take you in the morning. Alright. I'll see you tomorrow morning. See ya. Bye. day out there, eh? Yeah. I mean, how does it So what can I get for you today? I need new rigs. New rigs? How many do you need? About a hundred. Okay. So this is a confidential service. Um, I'm just going to give you some information on harm reduction. Is that okay? Yeah. So this is just on like harm reduction and safer drug injection. And there's like everything you need to know in here. So that's for you. Do you need everything? Like the clean? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to give you a sharp container too. Data for like data entry. Twenty one. You don't have any bricks on you, like any dirty ones that I can dispose of? No. Okay. So I'm gonna get you a snack. Get those out. Okay. There you go. Also, I would like to leave in the back. Okay, come on.
Dunford. I am a nurse with BON and we're in partnership with the AIDS Coalition. So they hire us to come in. There's two of us. Uh, Destin Nickerson is the other nurse and she does a week and then I do a week and this is how it's done. It's all day Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 8.30 to 4.30 and Thursdays is 8.30 to 12.30. Now on those days that we're in until 4.30 we actually only draw blood up until 3.30 the very latest because it's got to be to the, the lab by 4 o'clock or else they won't accept it. So we do like to, like to uh, let our clients know that if they're coming in for blood work they should be here at, before 3.30 if it's possible. So when we are testing we uh, let them know that if we're testing for just HIV all I need is the first name and the year of birth and nothing, no information goes on the requisition to a lab. It's just an, a coded number and I give them a card with that number on it so that when they come back in um, for the results they have their number. And if they want to be tested for hepatitis B, C, syphilis, liver enzymes, those other things that we do, I let them know that I do take their information, their name and address, and etc. I put it on a sticky note. Again, that information isn't saved. It doesn't go on the requisition that goes to the lab. There's still a coded number. But if it ever come back positive for the hepatitis or syphilis, public health would call me looking for that information so that they could get in touch with this person to make sure that they receive treatment. And usually I let everybody know that the results can take up to two weeks to come back in. Um, sometimes if they are seeing something in the blood work with the hepatitis or that it may take three weeks or four weeks depending because there are further tests that need to be done and it's usually sent to Halifax for that. And let me see what else do we do here. Oh, Besides the testing we do the flu clinic here every year. Just thought that would be good to know. We have people walking in out the street, don't need a health card number or anything, just come on in, we'll give you a flu shot. <laughs> We also provide a wellness clinic, so we are um, checking people's blood sugars and blood pressures and we're educating them on those things as well. And we also do uh, daily uh, dressings with some clients that have abscesses and things like that. We'll do, you know, just regular little dressings. Anything more uh, in depth than that, we of course advise them to seek medical attention with their family doctor or through the walk-in clinic. But um, back to our testing, we do let everybody know that there is what we call a three-month window uh, period. That means that if you think you came in uh, contact with something, if you're a needle user or anything like that, and you got scared uh, and you came in for testing, I'm going to let you know right away that it's going to take up to three months for those antibodies to show in the blood. So I'd certainly still test you to, to you know, for your comfort, uh, but I would definitely advise coming back when that three month period was up and if you could possibly refrain from doing that high risk activity again, so that way we could get an accurate um, result when that three month period is up. The importance is up there, it's very, very high, um, especially with Hep C, which is on the rise, and syphilis has been on the rise around here too. So it's been, um, there has been a lot of people coming in. It, our business has really picked up and it's really, really good. Um, and people coming in for peace of mind, even if somebody's getting involved in a new relationship, they're really taking the responsibility of looking after themselves and it's so good to see. They're just coming in and saying, you know, I'm starting a new relationship and I want to be tested and we just want to make sure everything's nice and, and clean before we get involved. And so, yeah, they, and as well, if you did have something, the sooner it's caught, the better. Um, with uh, Hep C, a lot of times it, the virus can be cleared and usually when people were diagnosed with Hep C it was uh, a lifetime thing and it still can be but now there's new medications out there that are helping to um, kill this virus or at least have the viral load so low that it's non-detectable anymore so therefore it can't be transmitted to anybody else. 
and some people have been known to clear the virus on their own if they're caught early enough, you know, so those are really good benefits to being tested. We have our website on the internet. Uh, by phone, our number here is 567-1123. There's also a 1-800 number. I have an email myself. It's joanne.dunford at von.ca. And Adesta is adesta.nickerson at von.ca. So um, they can also, we've had a lot of people email us looking for testing as well. My name is Clark Paul. I work for Eskisoni Mental Health. I work with residential school survivors. I'm the cultural support worker for them. I work with the survivors because I'm a survivor and it, I know exactly where they're coming from when they tell me about their experiences. That helps quite a bit. When I got out, I was lost for a long time, but this is what helped me come back. So I figure if this can help me, it could also help other people. And I'm also, I can't say ex addict, because once it's you're an addict, you're always an addict, just like being an alcoholic. You're never an ex-alcoholic, you're always an alcoholic. Okay. Turning back to the cultural ways helps. So I get, I don't work alone, I work with a whole team. Okay. It's just I'm only one little cog in a big wheel. You have to get them back to that point in time where they first started and why they started. So in this sense we build them back up again from where they had lost their cultural identity and you start building them back up again. Okay, I introduce them to medicines I use in the sweat. I use copal which is a tree sap from Mexico. And Copal is believed to take the negativity out of the world and attract love, give to go through teachings with them. Okay, because my first round is always for the children, second round is for the women, third round is for the elders and the sick, and the fourth round is for the people in their and their families. Um, when a person that's trying to get off drugs or alcohol abuse, okay, they come in, they're kind of worried, okay. So usually, first timers, usually, I will only use 28. Now, 28 would be maybe this big or a little bigger. Um, I have some inside that are like this. Okay. Um, but people that have sweated with me, I use anywhere from 70 up. And it really gets hot. But I don't like to get it so hot where a person will scream and holler. I want it, the heat to open up your pores and you, that toxin come out of you. When I get it hot enough, then I ask the doorkeeper to open the door and let the toxins out. Then we close it again and I start over again. But I'll continue that round. It's not over until my water is all gone.
Right. We pray. I start, I sit way in the back. Okay, and the prayers go to my left all the way around. I pray, thanking the spirits for being in there with us. I say my prayers, then in the meantime I'm putting water on. I usually put four, four splashes for the spirits. And then as we pray, each person says his prayer, I put one splash down. And it, that's the way it goes all the way around. But as it goes around, the heat also builds up. Okay? So any time while the prayers are going around, if it gets too hot for somebody, all they say is, I'm sitting Ogama or all my relations. Okay? If it, nobody's praying, then I have them open the door. But you, I don't like opening the door in the middle of a prayer because, you know, it's, to me, it's being disrespectful to the person that's saying his prayers. And it, to me, it doesn't matter how you pray as long as your prayers come from your heart. Contact me through uh, Mental Health Crisis Center, the easiest one. They always find me. But I'm at the office all the time, unless I'm on the road. But they'll contact me or give me the message that somebody called me. And just leave. All they have to do is leave their phone number how to be contacted, and I get right back to them when I get the message.